In today's video, we are going to do the initial setup of the Grandstream GWN7801 PoE switch. Now, I purchased this switch back in December when it first came out with my own funds at the price of around $125. The current market price is selling for around $170. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at this switch. On the front panel of the switch, you can see here the Grandstream branding, 8 gigabit PoE or PoE Plus ports, two SFP ports, a console port, a reset port, and a system status light. If we take a look at one side of the switch here, you can see some venting. Now this is a fanless switch. There is also a Kensington lock option and four holes for installing the included rack ears. The other side of the switch is extremely similar. You have more ventilation and the four holes for the rack ears. Now, even though this switch is not designed to fit in a standard rack, you could use the included rack ears if you were doing a vertical wall mounting option like that. In addition to including the two rack ears, they also included four sticky pads that could be adhered to the bottom of the switch in case you want to just use this switch as a desktop switch. You see here, we also have the information label, which contains your serial number, your Mac address, and your initial admin password. And then finally, on the back of the switch, you have more ventilation. You can see your port for plugging in your power cord and your grounding lug. All right, so we are at the GWN7801P sign-in page. Now, we can get to this page in two ways. One, you can plug it into an existing network, let the switch grab an address from the DHCP server, which is what I have done here. Or you can use the default IP address of 192.168.0.254. Just make sure you configure your computer's network adapter to an address in that same subnet. However, we're going to go with DHCP for now. Just as a side note, you can also log into the switch using the console port if you have a console cable. You also have the ability to telnet into the switch, and you could also configure and access the switch via GWN Cloud, which we will take a look at later in this video. I'll show you how to add the device to GWN.Cloud. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and log in with the admin username and password that's supplied on the bottom of the switch. So let's go ahead and click sign in. Okay, so we are now signed into the switch and you can see you have some basic information here. But if we look here, the system version is 1.0.1.20. Now I know that's an old version because I purchased this switch back in December of 2022. So I'm sure there have been several firmware releases since then. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to, I believe it's maintenance, and we're gonna click on upgrade and here we have several options for upgrading the firmware. We can upload the firmware file manually. So what we would do is go out to the firmware.grandstream.com website, look for your device, 7801P. You can see here the firmware, the current firmware is 1.0.1.36. So we're a couple of revs behind. So we can go ahead and click on this and it'll download that file to your desktop. Now, I've already done that, as you can see in the corner here, just to save time for this video. So let me bring up my downloads folder and show you what we got. So here you can see it downloads the firmware as a zip file. Once you unzip it, if you open up the folder, you can see the binary file here. That is the file that you would actually upload. So if we went to do it manually, we'd click select file to upload and then just navigate to the downloaded binary file. And this would be the file that we would select to upload. But we also have another way of doing it. We could actually have the switch go out to firmware.grandstream.com to pull the latest version. So let's do that. We're going to say OK. We're going to save. And now we're going to tell the switch to go out and detect to see if there's any new firmware versions. Detected new firmware 1.0.1.36, confirm to upgrade. We'll go ahead and we will download and upgrade and we will come back after the upgrade has finished.
Okay, so the whole process of downloading the firmware and installing it took about four to five minutes. And now we're going to go ahead and log in. I waited for the light on the switch to stop flashing orange. It turned solid green, now it's solid blue. So I'm gonna go ahead, I think that's okay, which means I can log in. So let's go ahead and do that and see if we can get to the login page. Here we are, we're back at the login page. So we're gonna log in again with the default credentials. Okay, so now we're back logged in. You can see now the system version is up to date at 1.0.1.36. I was expecting once I upgraded the firmware to be prompted to change the default password, but since that didn't prompt me, let's go up. We could do that manually. Let's come up to the admin and let's come down to the change password option in the menu. And let's enter the current password. Again, this is found on the bottom of the device. There's also an extra sticker that comes included in the box. Operation success. Let's come up here and click the blue save button. And now we should be able to log out and log back in with the newly changed password. So let's give that a shot. There we go. Okay. So in this segment of the video, I want to cover how to change a device name and also how to update the current time. But before we do that, let's just take a look at this overview page. You can see we have the device name here the Mac address, the IP address, the gateway, the IP version six address, part number, serial number, the system time. And you can see we need to update that system version, which is the firmware, which we upgraded earlier in the video. And then we have our status of PoE here. We're not using any PoE because I don't have anything plugged into the switch at the time. You can see your resource status in the upper right. You have a CPU fluctuating between six and 8% and that will vary. And then you have your memory usage at 65%. The bottom, we have some system events and you can see here we have some errors and notifications and warnings, and they're all probably based on the uh, current timestamp. So let's go ahead and get that updated. First, we'll start with changing the device name. So we'll come over the, under basic in, info where it says switch. Let's click on the edit icon and we'll just change the name here. One to 64 alphanumeric characters and some special characters as well. So we're just gonna call it Quick Tech Lab 7801. We'll do an underscore. And I'll include the P because there is a 7801 non-POE version of this switch. So we'll go ahead and we'll click okay. You can see here now under the basic info, it has changed to QuickTech underscore lab underscore 7801P. Let's go ahead and hit the save button. Next, let's go over to system on the left menu and come down to time settings. And you can see by default out of the box, the date and the time is set to manual. So let's go ahead and click on automatic NTP server. I'm going to just leave it to the default pool.ntp.org, but we're going to change the time zone from Beijing, Hong Kong. For me, it's going to be Eastern, US and Canada. We're going to go ahead and click OK. And we got operation success. We're going to go ahead and say save. Now, if we go back up to the overview dashboard page, we can see that our time has now been updated. Okay, we are back on our GWN 7801P. Let's come over to the system menu. We're going to show you how to add users in this segment. So we're gonna come down to user management. You can see here we have the admin user. We're gonna click on the add button. And in this dialog box, you could see a couple of things. It's requiring a username of one to 64 alphanumeric characters and special characters. 
The password has to be between 8 and 32 characters, and it must contain at least two of the following, letters, numbers, and special characters. And then you have two levels of users. You have an operator, which allows all features except for the configuring of the management IP address and factory reset. And then you have just a monitor level, which this user can only view information, cannot make any changes. So for now, let's go ahead and add an operator and we'll call this operator Tony. We'll come down to the password and remember, has to have at least two letters, two numbers and special characters. So we're gonna do our usual and we'll add a couple of special characters. See if it accepts those. Now let's go ahead and click OK. It says it was added successfully. Let's go ahead and hit the Save button. And let's log out as admin and test the new user. So we'll come here, we'll say Tony. And now you can see we're logged in as Tony and it accepted the new user credentials. Okay, in this segment of the video, as I promised earlier, I'm gonna show you how to add the GWN 7801 switch to the GWN.cloud free management solution. Now, if you don't already have a GWN.cloud account, point your browser to GWN.cloud. Come over down here where it says don't have an account. Click the blue sign up link and get yourself a free account. I already have an account, so I'm going to go ahead and get signed in. Okay, so now we are signed in and we're going to come up to here and I'm going to click the site that I want to add the switch to. So that'll be QT Lab. And then I'm going to come over to the left menu again and click on devices. I already have one device added to my GWN.cloud account. That's the GWN7062 router, which is offline at the moment. We're going to come up and click on the add button. And here we just need to give it a name. And we have two required pieces of information. And that is the MAC address and the password. So we're going to go ahead and give this a name. And the MAC address is, and the password I believe is the initial admin password that's on the bottom of the unit, not the password that you updated to. So we're gonna add the password that's on the sticker on the bottom of the unit, and we're going to go ahead and hit add. And here you can see the GWN 780 one P has been added. That's the model. You can see it's got a green status light, which is telling us it's online. I should be able to click on this remote access link now. And from here, I should be able to access the 7801 P through the GWN.cloud portal. Remote access to GWN device. And here you can see it's taking me to the login page. Now I can enter my credentials. I'll sign in as the admin, but here I'm going to use the password, not the initial password, but the password that I changed. And you can see now I'm su successfully logged in to manage the device through the GWN.cloud portal. So there's a first look and initial setup of the Grandstream GWN 7801P Layer 2 switch. I'm super excited to learn more about this switch and the features it has to offer from a home networking standpoint. In fact, the next video I'm hoping to explore and learn how to create VLANs. So if that's something you think you're interested in, stay tuned to the channel. Now, that said, I am also hoping to plan a home network series using a full Grandstream stack, including the GWN7062 router, the switch I showed you in this video, and the Grandstream 7660 access point. Again, if you're interested in seeing that series, then make sure you stay tuned to the channel. All that said, 
If you like the video and would like to see more content of this type, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out other videos that I list here up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I want to thank you as I do in every video for using the Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. Once again, my name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.